Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's review of the Rugby Championship's fifth round as New Zealand sealed the Rugby Championship, winning it back off the hands of the Springboks who, after falling down to New Zealand, um, have actually dropped down to third in the championship with Australia's win over Argentina, moving them up to third place. And unless Argentina lose this weekend and South Africa go on to beat New Zealand, it looks like this is pretty much how the rugby championship log will look. New Zealand can't be caught. Argentina can't catch anyone. So it all comes down to who will finish second and who will finish third. And I think we're actually at the stage now where it's it's about pride at the moment. It really isn't about rugby championship standings. It's all about the pride on the line for this weekend for all four sides involved. You know, can New Zealand go six from six and make it a clean sweep? Um, will Argentina be able to get any points on the board? Um, and, and will South Africa be able to, you know, sort of redeem themselves and be able to leave the Australasian to our, our four matches with at least one victory. We'll see that this weekend. But in terms of the past weekend, before we look at some of the results, please do smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Um, and there are. So it started off on Saturday with the Springboks versus New Zealand game with the New Zealand winning 19 points to seven. A very, very close match, which, I mean, you talk about a game of inches and it really was. Uh, it really was a game that could have gone either way. Um, and you look at the sort of stats and, it, and look, they were fairly, they were fairly even. In certain respects. Um, so if looking at some of the attacking stats, um, obviously one try apiece, New Zealand scoring very, very early in just the second or third minute. And then South Africa uh, heading back quite um, a few minutes later as um, Spoon and Corsi went off. Spoon and Corsi, Will Jordan, so two wings scoring the, the tries this weekend. In terms of meters carried, 255 by Springboks, 402 by the All Blacks, um, 65 carries to 97 in favor of the All Blacks. The All Blacks beat 10 more defenders, 25 to 15, and had two more clean breaks, 4 to 2. Um, completing a lot more passes, a lot more offloads, but also conceding 24 turnovers. Um, and that, so, I mean, outrunning, outrunning the Springboks in many ways and being able to get to the Springbok defense, not quite be able to sort of score as many tries as they'd like to. Um, and the Springboks, sort of their biggest sort of avenue in the way they managed to disrupt the flow was at the breakdown, um, with, I mean, New Zealand conceding possession 24 times. Um, defensively, New Zealand missed 15 tackles, South Africa missed 25, but South Africa winning 11 turnovers on the ground, New Zealand just the three, South Africa making 85 tackles to New Zealand's 78. Um, in terms of kicks in play, obviously South Africa a lot more is kicking the ball 58 times compared to New Zealand's 18. Probably the area which we talked about the idea of finding a balance, and there's no issue with a kicking game, but you need to find the right times and the right types of kick and when to execute it. Um, if you're going to be very honest, you know, it's very... You, you will have to kick at some stage. And South Africa does base their game around kicking possession and retaining it. But there's a large amount of conversation in terms of when you have to, when you do kick and when you don't kick. And I think that's becoming the issue um, surrounding the Springboks at the moment. Um, at the breakdown, Springboks won 55 breakdowns and New Zealand 64. And New Zealand lost 64. Um, so it lost six racks and, the, and South Africa lost just four. The malls are pretty even. South Africa's rack percentage is obviously a lot better. Uh, lineups was a, was, was a position that the Springboks really managed to sort of claw their way into the game and disrupt the flow of New Zealand. Um, they won 10 lineups, New Zealand 17, but New Zealand lost four lineups. South Africa lost just the one, operating at a 91% lineup success rate compared to New Zealand's, and New Zealand's 81%. Uh, neither side lost a single scrum. Um, so scrums are pretty even in terms of penalties conceded. That's certainly an aspect where South Africa need to try and improve. 16, um, 16 penalties conceded compared to 10. One yellow card um, as well. Possession was 52-48, so pretty even. Most of the game um, was being played in sort of the, the box, sort of in between the box 22 and the halfway line. That was most of sort of the territory and stuff. Again, most where most of the action um, took place. Um and yeah, and then in terms, I'm um, so 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 it was it was a game that that I said it could have gone either way. But in terms of New Zealand versus I mean, Argentina versus Australia, definitely not a game that went either way. South Africa with I mean Australia with a very very comprehensive 27 points to eight victory over Argentina, and with that uh, they surged into third place. But look at the game itself, you know, um, dominated meters carried, having I mean, almost three times as many meters, three tries to one, 31 defenders beaten. Uh, 10 clean breaks, Argentina didn't have a single one, far more passes, far more offloads, um, conceded fewer turnovers, they missed just 10 tackles at Australia and they made 95 in comparison, Argentina missed 31 tackles, you cannot miss 31 tackles and expect to try and win games. Um, Argentina did win a few more turnovers, um, but in terms of kicking as well, 22 kicks from Australia, 27 from Argentina, so far fewer than the Springboks, but more than New Zealand. Uh, rucks wise, um, pretty solid for both sides. The breakdown wasn't really that well contested. Uh, lineouts lost, they actually lost four lines to Australia. Um, Argentina losing just two. Um, the sign percentage was pretty poor for both of them 73% for Australia, 84% for Argentina. But penalties as well, managing to sort of keep that penalty count down both sides. 11 penalties by Argentina, 13 penalties by 
Um, Australia, 57% possession for Australia and 43% for Argentina. So after that weekend's action, this is how the Rugby Championship log looks. New Zealand well ahead with 24 points, 11 points um, ahead of Australia. So Australia can only go up to 18 points. So New Zealand will finish a minimum of six points ahead of second. And what has been a, one of the most dominant performances in the Rugby Championship we have seen in a very, very long time. South African fans will not enjoy seeing themselves below Australia. They sit on 11 points after five games, just the two victories, losing three times, which is quite uncharacteristic for the Springboks. Um, looking at the points difference, New Zealand was sitting at 116 points difference. Australia actually with a negative 18 points difference because of those big losses against Australia. Um, so they're still trying to catch up that points difference. South Africa sitting with a positive 22 points difference and Argentina with a very, very poor minus 120 points difference. They do not have a single point on the board. They haven't come within seven once. They haven't scored any tries um, to sort of get themselves within within, within distance of the other sides. Um, and haven't got a victory. So Argentina want to get something on the board. They're going to have to try and finish at least within seven um, against Australia this weekend or else go out and try and beat them. And I think we have seen a little bit of improvement from Argentina, but at the end of the day, and, and, and Mario Dez has spoken about this, it's been an incredibly big ask for Argentina who have continued to have to travel away from home, play all the rugby away from home um, in, in conditions which, which don't always favor them. And we all know that traveling to Argentina, playing in Argentina is a massive, massive um, task for any side. And they haven't had that home ground advantage. So they have definitely been the side that has been the most disadvantaged throughout not only this Rugby Championship, but also the Tri-Nations last year and where they had to go over and play against New Zealand and Australia in Australia. So that's how it currently looks. Um, New Zealand, we're looking to try and extend this um, their, their lead. Try and, I mean, a win will put them up to 28 points, could even go up to 29 points, um, which is pretty pretty impressive um, because it's literally 29 of a possible 30 points that you can get in the rugby championship. So they could almost go, like, it was almost, it's almost completely flawless performance by New Zealand who are back to their best. Um, ironically, a year ago, you know, they lost to Australia, they lost to New Zealand, that, and, and, and a couple of of doubts over Ian Foster and his management, um, but this season have come back with an absolute storming performance and are busy cleaning, sweeping anyone in front of them. Let me know what you thought about this past weekend's rugby championship action. Just one more weekend this weekend ahead, and then we will have to take a break until next year. So, yeah, a big game against between South Africa and New Zealand. That will take place at 5 past 12 this weekend. RC versus Australia will be the early game at 9 o'clock. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Stephen. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll chat to you soon.